Your Excellency, I will crave your indulgence to allow me not to stand or sit on the protocol you have established, but to adopt the protocol that you have established. Because if I stand on it, I may break it. If I sit on it, it may collapse. <laughs> Your Excellency, when you met me at the airport, I said to you, your choosing this day must have been inspired by God. Because for you, for me, for everyone in Nigeria, this day is our most significant and our most memorable. So thank you, Governor Moru Finditri, for giving me the honor, the honor, and also the pleasure of being with you on this day. Exactly 25 years ago, exactly, we started on a journey in this country. And now, a quarter of a century of years, we are still on that journey, undisturbed, on short circuited, and unstopped. Yes, there will be some people who will say that we have not achieved as much as we should achieve. I will not argue with them. But then, we are still on that job. We have not been derailed. And I hope and pray that we will not be derailed. So that, to me, is the part of the significance of this day which you have chosen for the commissioning of Adamawa Unity Center, I will call it, because here you have three facilities on the same. You have an underpass, you have an overbridge, you have well, and then a road that goes on normal ground. Three in one. And as you rightly pointed out, this is the first of its kind in this part of the country and indeed in this part of the world. Before I go on, I said it is exactly 25 years ago that we started this journey. Mr. Governor, it is also exactly five years ago that you started the journey. So, one fifth of the number of years that we have been on this journey, you have completed. You will complete more. You are six. But before I come to where I am coming with you, when I was here, the late Lamido took me as a child of his. Not only was he sending regular messages to me in the prison, 
He provided for me a refrigerator. And if you go to my presidential library today, you will find that it's very for that. But not only that. Let me stand by. <laughs> not only that. He asked me that he will send an air conditioner. Then I sent a message back. I said, Your Eminence, the man who put me here didn't want me to have the pleasure of an air conditioner. So if you give me an air conditioner, the prison authority may remove it. So let us leave it at a fan. So I had a fan installed in my cell. My stay here in Yola for well over three years made an impact on my life. And I've, and I've said it, I've said it on very many occasions. The fact that I was here made my performance as an elected president of Nigeria better than it would have been otherwise. So what I'm trying to say there, Governor, is that in all situations, try and see what is the good that you can get out of it. Now that comes to you. You are doing so well, and that's why I've come. Here. You are doing so well that you must continue to do well, because the sky is the limit. I won't say more than that. You are doing so well, and you should continue to do well, because the sky is the limit. Now, here in Yola and in Adamawa, I can claim, and don't think that I will come and compete with you, so don't be afraid. <laughs> I can claim to be what in our part of the world they call Sean of the Soil. Because having lived for more than three years in a place, I should be able to, com uh, to qualify to compete, but I will not be ambitious to want to compete. But the point I'm trying to make is here, as the former governor mentioned, I have friends, friends who have been with me, militarily, Jacob and Tony. Tony is getting old. I just told him. Tony, you have to do a little bit more exercise because you are getting too old for my liking at a young age. Um, but on a serious note, of course, my vice president, when I was elected president, was from here. Let me now talk about this facility. One of my best friends in Nigeria, I mean, he so rest in perfect peace, was Ahmed Jordan. And Ahmed Jordan and I have come a long way. When the the Meta Bridge and the Norman Bridge were constructed by us. And my daughter came to me and said, let us pray. And we prayed. And he said he never believed that in his lifetime there would be a bridge in Jemeta and a bridge in Norman. And of course he went to um, uh, what, uh, the, the, the secondary school 
that they went in in Kaduna. Barewa. Barewa. They went to Barewa. And he had to travel to Barewa and then cross the two uh, uh, cross the river in two places. So Governor, after the creation of this state and after being here and after I never thought that in my lifetime there will be a flyover in Yola, Jamaica. I never thought there would be an underpass in my lifetime. You have made it happen in my lifetime. And I thank you immensely. As you rightly said, it means it can happen. It can be done. And you have done it. And you will do a lot more by the grace of God. So the lesson from that is that, yes, you dream. And when you dream, you make every effort, commitment, single-mindedness, and frugality to raise small funds and to save and to make resources available to achieve your dream. And then your dream will come true. That is what you have put for us. But uh, you talk about those who do not believe it was possible. Every good thing and when you are doing something and there are no doubters who believe you may not achieve it. Look at that thing. Maybe you haven't got it right. But when you are doing something and there are doubters, those who believe, oh yes, it will not happen. It will not be completed. It should give you extra energy, extra uh, commitment to get it done. You should see it as inspiration rather than condemnation. And that is what you have shown us here. And may God continue to expand your post. Now, urban renewal and urban development. Commissioner for Works and Energy. I think um, if you are listening to me wherever you may be, I want to commend your effort. And um, I also want to say that after urban renewal and urban development, which had to be a continual effort, we must not forget rural development and particularly the issue of insecurity which are driven many of our people from the rural area to the urban area. Governor, we have to do our utmost best to ensure security so that our people can go back to their, what I will call their area of uh, we, we, their habitat which is uh, close to them and they know well and then of course they go on to produce food and live their normal life now if we can take care of security then the issue of development in the rural area tied up with urban renewal and urban development will mean that there will be job creation, wealth generation, empowerment, and indeed good life for our people. 
whether they live in the rural area or they live in the urban area. That brings me to what I will just ask you to continue to do more of, and that is the development of the economy. Our economy is not what it should be. But we can make it what it should be. And we should make it what it should be. All that is required is more of what we are doing here. And if we have half of the states in this country aspiring and achieving the sort of program development, project creation and development that you are doing in this state, it is a matter of time when Nigeria can claim and we claim to be among real developing countries in the world. And then we will get to where we should get to. I do not believe that God created Nigeria to be a basket case or a failure. That Nigeria is not where it should be. We must blame ourselves. And we shouldn't be passing buck. It shouldn't be a oh, this one hasn't done this. If we are going to a portion blame, we are all to blame. But then the time has come when we should say, okay, if we were wrong 25 years ago, 30 years ago, we should learn from our lessons and not be wrong today. Governor, once again, I thank you for making me to be proud of being here on this day. 25 years ago, we started on this journey. Because of the foundation that was laid, we are still on that journey. This is the longest period that we have been on democracy, on non-military governance in this country since independence. Yes, as I said, it's not a, bell, uh, a bed of roses, but that we are still on means that we can correct ourselves as we go on. So, Governor, I feel really, really, as somebody, tell, let me end on this note, so that I will say what I want to say. When we were campaigning, immediately after I left the prison, and there are many of us campaigning in our party, then, your party. And one of the contestants, he got his team, and they would go out and say, look, everybody is for you. Everybody is for you. Uh, we've gone out, and all we need is to be energized. So to be energized means more money. And then they will give them money. They will go and come and say the same thing again. On the day of the primary, he got only four votes. With all the energization, he got only four votes. And he sent, then came to me and said, look, out of these four votes, one was his own. So only three people 
voted for him and the amount of money he gave for energization is unbelievable in our own case we have to be energized not in the way that my colleague who contested with me at that time energize people without resolve. In our own case, it must be energization with resolve. Thank you very much. and dedicate this historic interchange for the benefit of all those who will make use of it, either as an overbridge, as an underpass, or as a road on the level ground. In the name of God Almighty, so that they will enjoy the benefit politically, economically, and socially. And the mind that, con con that conceived it and the hands that build it will continue to be blessed to do more. We thank God Almighty for this. We thank all that are involved and we thank the leadership of the governor and the work of the contractor who have done it in good time and in a form that is so pleasant that I hope they will get more like this. So be it God.
Bueno. Sí, pero...